Good morning, Internet. Welcome back to the Doomed Rat's Nest. This has gone dormant, but I thought we'd go into debug mode and kind of show what it takes to get this thing started. Uh, at the end of the last episode, it was like kind of underwhelming. It just kind of created a chunk here, and it made me think about, well, how do you get this started? And I thought we'd go over that. So a couple of changes is I dumped some uranium ore in here and melted it because you need that higher evaporation point. Almost anything else, when this erupts, will make that flash. So, sent over some uranium ore, melted it, wasn't a big deal. So here in debug mode, we'll kind of go over the idea. I made this area sealed, so that way in case any gases get out on this side, nothing gets in over here. When this erupts, and let's see, niobium liquid, and 52, so I think that's, 3,500, and it erupts at, yeah, we'll just say 350 per second. I'm not going to quite go that fast, but this will give you the idea. So this erupts, it pours off, it keeps erupting, it makes chunks and starts to heat up that steam. And that's good enough right now, just for an example. So that comes down here, that then heats up this steam. If this steam gets hot enough, this sensor triggers that door, which is why this stuff needs to be hot, or needs to not evaporate. So you end up with these chunks. So all I do is, you deconstruct those buildings, have your dupes dig up the niobium, I then sweep the insulation into here and sweep the niobium down to there. So this is set to sweep only insulation. And this one's set to sweep only niobium. And I could probably like take out that tile and let it exchange heat down here, but whatever. And that way they're just not carrying hot stuff out over here. And then once they've swept it all, you oh, these need to be insulation. And then you're prepped for the next eruption, which of course takes a while, but we are going to fast forward things because that's what we can do in debug mode. What, you came here just to be called to lunch? Oh, I definitely need some more ladder. I don't think I've had them get called to lunch at exactly that time before. So, there we go, and now we're prepped for the next eruption. Bang, it's 20 cycles later, or whatever. This erupts a whole bunch. And as it's doing that, this temperature is coming up. And the eruptions are actually pretty big. And eventually this flows over the top of that chunk and then forms a new chunk. Coming yeah. 32.26 is about the right temperature. My, no, I'm right on. Cameron, what do these form a tile at? Wow, a lot. Paint. I just want it to flow over the top. And while it's exchanging heat, there it goes. Yeah, see it'll form a new chunk over here. This stuff, there's 2,000 kilograms of steam in here, so that's going to take quite a bit of heat. This stuff melts at 24. 
So we need another 500 degrees in here, which is gonna take a while. But right now, I'll let it cool off until these become solid again, and then we dig and empty. And now we're back to the emptying phase. And I did take this out. You, This won't melt obsidian because by the time these form solid chunks, they're below the melting point of obsidian. So there shouldn't be a risk of rock gas. Yeah, this is basically how I got... No, not... Oh, and the middle of a save. Yeah, so I'll go rebuild this. We'll go for another eruption. This time I'm actually going to paint it right here because that will help get everything up to temperature faster. And see now the sensor will start going off. By painting on top of the temp shift plate, I actually get the temp shift plate up to that temperature. That's why I see everything melting. And see the door is cycling, and then as little chunks form, the, the solid chunks can go up the doors. It should be just about there, like 100 degrees off. There's a solid chunk. Almost. Oh, there. Almost. That piece almost went up. Yeah, so let's say the eruption is over. You wait for this to become solid again. It, you know, even if it's at this point, that's solid enough. But right now, we're trying to see what happens when it actually gets all the way up to a liquid. There it goes. See the little chunk popping over? Alright, so now... The eruption is going. And now you can see the liquid goes up. And then once this all gets up to temperature, it stays a, a liquid all the way across. And then once it's a liquid all the way across, it exchanges heat with this tungsten filter gate, which is a melting point of 3400, so it won't melt. The liquid blob exchanges heat with this gate, which is being cooled by the uranium and this tile. And then there's another thousand kilograms of steam in here. And this is what controls the sensor. As long as this is below 160, then the auto sweeper will run. And I think originally I had it set to like 140. It goes through a filter gate that's set to 50 seconds. So it's gotta stay below that temperature for quite some time. So let's go for big eruption. So there's now a lot of heat in here, but this still isn't up to that 2620. You see now this is too hot. So the sweeper stops and waits for this to cool down. This gets sucked out by that sensor. And there we go. So that's how you get this started in survival. Obviously I did cheat a little bit there by having my eruption happen faster. But yeah, it's a great little system. Thank you very much to Mikhail. Mikhail? Anyway, however you pronounce your name, I'm sorry if I got it wrong. A great design that doesn't take a whole lot of fanciness. I mean, obviously I'm using a lot of insulated tiles, but you don't need that many. This is just diamond and tungsten, mostly, and wolframite. So all easy stuff to get, even in the early game. This is just uranium ore melted. And you know, I put super coolant in here, but you can put anything, because it's cooled by that side. So that is the Niobium Volcano, completely tamed. So I thought we'd just do a little look back 
at this playthrough. It's gotten very chunky and slow, so this will probably be the end of it. We have an unbelievable amount of power stored in here. I mean, the amount of power that the sour gas boiler is sending out. I mean, every time you load up the star map, you get a picture like that of just shells everywhere. If we look over here, we have melted a big chunk of the ice planet just by sending shells over. Like some of the air is actually warm. The water planet is slowly coming down. I mean, we're now below that entire pump. A little bit more pressure damage happened, but it's getting there. I mean, I could put a second pump in down here, but... Yeah, for a planet with two dupes, it worked out. I really like this. This power shutoff flip-flop by only running one aqua tuner means that you only need one wire. And it works. So I'm prob you're probably going to be seeing that a lot more from me. So I don't have to run two transformers to get power into here or a heavy wire. You can just use a power shutoff and flip back and forth. During the initial cooldown, it'll take some time. But all in all, not a big deal. The Slicksters, I, I killed them all again. There's still 71 critters in there. So many eggs. Oil-wise, I was actually using up more oil than I was making. This can run 30, but even with the hundreds of Slicksters I had, I just could never make enough oil to run it at 30. You know, this Sulfur Tamer for getting Sweetle Meat. I mean, obviously a lot of that barbecue is from the Slicksters, but there is a couple hundred tons of Sulfur there. I could run a lot more Sweetles off of this. One sulfur vent, and then there's also another several hundred tons of really cold sulfur. This thing is, of course, absolutely insane. We're up to 400 kilograms over here, and we're up to 250 stored in this room. And then the massive set of guns that are shooting. Yeah, that's one kilo a second from every gun. I could run four more. I just don't have any planets to shoot them at. But if I had a planet that needed two kilos a second of sour gas, add in more launchers. And away they go. And then running super cool in here. It took a while to start up. I don't know if it's more stable. It definitely feels good. Oh, all B. I actually used all the plastic I shipped over here. I think I shipped a hundred tons. And this finally ate it all. I just stopped shipping more because didn't need it. Yeah, nice little mini base. And then over here, I mean, beta hives, as we all know, are just ridiculous. How much uranium did I end up with? No, not that. You. So there's 330 kilograms on the ground, but that does not count, you know, that's 20 per rail segment. And then this automation over here for the research reactor. Yeah, I, I am happy with this. By controlling this to 0 0.07, it keeps these running, but not quite at full power. I wonder if you can do 0 0.075. Yeah, maybe it's just a slight bit more to get these from 500 to 600 watts, but yeah, I mean, adjust the amount of steam turbines you have, slowly adjust the meter to match. And then another nice little mini base with a whole lot of fried mushroom. And how am I? Oh, it looks like my sweet old numbers have come up again. Yeah. So we actually have eggs over here. Automatic mushroom farm did exactly what it's supposed to do. I like those once they get running. And then the main base, I never bothered cleaning it up because I think it's just funnier to have you know, crazy piping of a bathroom over here and a bathroom over there and pipes everywhere. But we ended up with extra bris bristleberry. Nice big chunk of 
Barry Slug, and you inquiring minds want to know. Yeah, there's another 400 tons of plastic over here. I burned 100 tons, and I took a couple hundred tons to each of the other bases. Just craziness. Love it. Uh, germ rooms, I don't... I just don't think they're necessary. I, I like building them. I think they look cool, having the chlorine room cleaning the germs. But even over here... Now this water probably needs cleaning. That's 400 million germs. But for your normal base, burn it or you feed it to thimble reeds and your dupes don't care. The only thing you care about is whether or not you put it in a pitcher pump so it goes into the coolers and I think soda fountains... No, I don't think soda fountains count. I think it only counts if they get it from a water cooler. I've even seen uh, food poison germs coming out of a gas pump and doesn't seem to affect them. Drecos for reed fiber are a bit slow, so definitely thimble reeds once you can get them. Yeah, we're at zero because I've been shipping them and burning them. Power wise, <laughs> that just, oh, I love that. You know, the giant battery stack is always good. I mean, it. it's nice that they limited the height, but all I have to do is build a couple more rocket platforms, take it up and down the entire base. This thing has been running well, and there's 100 tons of igneous rock. Didn't even melt the entire ice biome. It looks like my carbon dioxide has finally exploded. And my hot polluted oxygen vent that I opened more than a thousand cycles ago still has not overheated this area. I was worried when I opened it that it would burn out everything. And I think I got the overheat warnings once, swapped these over to steel, and yeah, it was just free oxygen down here. Ooh, how does my gas piping work? Look. That's pretty clean. I mean, I got some weird pipes to get to various bits, but yeah. I like it. And then this thing over here, you know, running three thermoregulators to get this started worked out great. Put the aqua tuner in with the piping so I could switch it to super coolant once I could get it. But for getting liquid oxidizer just makes rockets so much easier that I'm, I will do that more often. And then my rusty oxidizers for making the gas, that worked out well. So I'm really happy with this playthrough. We did a lot of fun and new stuff. We made some giant stupid machines. And, you know, rocket shipping over hundreds of tons of natural gas. It's just, almost feels like cheating. Now this thing will keep running until this sensor drops below 150. And that takes a long time. Each one of these chunks is nine kilograms. So it's taking a very small small amount of liquid over here. And all the stuff is super hot. You see the temperature over here will keep climbing because obviously nine kilograms at 2000 degrees is a lot. But this thing erupts so infrequently, it's like every 15 cycles, that by the time it erupts again, this will have cooled down enough to run the auto sweeper that then runs through the ice and melts everything. And if you want it to run more often, set this temperature higher. I've got it set to 220. I think the initial setting was like 180, but I want to suck the heat out of here faster. So running this to 220 just means I'm wasting power on the steam turbines, or I could toss a couple more on there. Doesn't matter. So, thank you all very much for watching. I've really enjoyed this playthrough. Uh, one thing I will say is, if you like what I'm doing, I don't say this like a lot of other YouTubers, but like, comment, and subscribe. I'm right around 900 subscribers right now, which is amazing. I was surprised when I got one, and surprised when I got two, and surprised when I got 892. So, 
If you want to subscribe, great. I would love to try to get that up to a thousand because it's yeah, a nice round number and really makes me appreciate all the people who watch, comment, and like what I'm doing. If there's anything you want to see, let me know. I'll probably will take a break for a little bit because, yeah, this, this playthrough definitely has taken a lot of time of just waiting for dupes to melt or to pump magma. I mean, it's just been hours and hours of me sitting around. Oh, good. <laughs> Let's watch them pump more magma. And I forgot to do the overview of the tree planet. The cuddle pips, I think, are adorable. I think whenever I do pips now, I'll try to get them all over the cuddles. Just because they are cuter, you get the little hearts, and you can fit more in a ranch. So thank you all for watching. Thanks all for the comments. And thank you for all the people who, you know, were nice enough to click that subscribe button. I hope you all have a wonderful day and enjoy playing the game.